In the digital control part of this module, we have looked at modeling discrete time signals and systems. We will use these concepts in the rest of the module to model systems that contain both discrete time and continuous time components. However, before we move on to such hybrid systems, it would be insightful to pause a bit, look back at all the techniques we used for modeling discrete time signals and systems, and contrast it to the more familiar techniques for modeling continuous time signals and systems. The topic of this video is therefore an overview of discrete time modeling techniques and a comparison with continuous time modeling techniques. The signals we consider are discrete time signals, which are only defined at integer values of the time index k. We contrast them to continuous time signals, which are defined for any real value of the time variable t. The systems we consider are linear time invariant discrete time systems, here depicted with input signal r of k and output signal y of k. We contrast them to linear time invariant continuous time systems, here depicted with input signal u of t and output signal y of t. One way to model discrete time systems in the time domain is with difference equations, where we describe the relationship between a system signals and their time delayed versions. The analogous continuous time model is differential equations, where we describe the relationship between a system signal and their derivatives. Another way to model discrete time systems in the time domain is with the impulse response, which is the output of a system in response to a discrete time impulse input signal. The analogous continuous time model is the continuous time impulse response, which is the output of a system in response to a continuous time impulse input signal. We also model discrete time signals and systems in the Z domain. This is useful to do since certain operations are easier to do in the Z domain than in the time domain and the dynamics of a system can compactly be described in terms of Z domain properties. The analogous continuous time model is the Laplace domain. We convert discrete time signals to the Z domain by applying the Z transform and the resulting signal is described in terms of the complex variable Z. The signal in the Z domain can be transformed back to the time domain by applying the inverse Z transform. A continuous time signal can analogously be transformed to the Laplace domain by applying the Laplace transform. The resulting signal is described in terms of the complex variable S and can be transformed back to the time domain using the inverse Laplace transform. Discrete time systems are described in the Z domain as transfer functions. The transfer function is defined in two equivalent ways. It is the Z-transform of the impulse response of the system and it is also the Z-transform of an output signal divided by the Z-transform of the corresponding input signal. Continuous time systems are described in the Laplace domain by transfer functions, which are analogously defined as the Laplace transform of the impulse response of the system and the Laplace transform of an output signal divided by the Laplace transform of the corresponding input signal. We draw block diagrams of discrete time systems using gain, summation and unit delay blocks. One can therefore think of the unit delay block as the basic dynamic unit of discrete time systems. The transfer function of a unit delay is 1 over z. Analogously, we draw block diagrams of continuous time systems using gain, summation and integrator blocks. The basic dynamic unit is therefore the integrator, or 1 over s. It is important to note that this does not mean that the unit delay can be thought of as a discrete time integrator. The discrete time integrator has a different transfer function. We concisely describe the dynamics of a discrete time system by calculating its poles and zeros from its transfer function. We often plot these poles and zeros on the complex z-plane. For a continuous time system, we calculate its poles and zeros in the same way from its transfer function and we often plot them on the complex s-plane. However, the location of poles and zeros on the s-plane cannot be interpreted in the same way as poles and zeros on the z-plane. We have already seen that poles within the unit circle in the z-plane are stable, whereas stable poles are located in the left half-plane of the s-plane. We will look at ways to map discrete time poles from the z-plane to equivalent locations in the s-plane at a later stage. Doing this will allow us to attach more meaning to pole locations 
in the z-plane. In conclusion, we can see that there are several similarities between modeling discrete time and continuous time signals and systems. We can exploit this fact to improve our understanding of discrete time signals and systems. However, there are a few significant differences and one should be careful not to assume similarities when there are none.